Hi, my name is Valeria and I'm here to just do a quick alumni profile about myself and talk about my journey from UCR to med school. Um, so a little bit about me. I started at UCR in 2016, uh, which was right after high school, and then I graduated in 2020. Um, and I started med school summer of 2021 after taking a gap year. Um, I came in as a psych major and I um, came in knowing I wanted to be pre-med right away. Um, so some of the things I did at UCR, um, as most of you know, um, it's necessary to check the boxes of clinical volunteering, non-clinical volunteering, uh, usually research for the most part, shadowing, um, and possibly leadership, um, which could also fall into one of the other categories. So I did my clinical volunteering at Riverside Community Hospital. Um, I did it through their main just general program, but they also have the COPE Health Scholars there, or did at the time. And looking back, I think I might have benefited more from doing that one, just because it seemed like those volunteers got to do things that were a little bit more clinical. Um, they were kind of more integrated into the workings of the hospital. Um, those general volunteers did things like escort people in wheelchairs, like push the wheelchairs, um, carry specimens around, bring flowers uh, to people's rooms and things like that, which were still nice to do um, and obviously still worked out for me having that be my clinical experience, but um, that's something to consider. And another thing you could do is um, clinical employments with something like scribing or a medical assistant um, <clears throat> can take the place of clinical volunteering because it'll still give you those um, experiences and that insight. Then for my non-clinical, um, I chose to break it up between a few different um, organizations. So I actually worked with Planned Parenthood, um, kind of getting the word out about their clinics and the services that they offered. Um, I also worked with MESA, which stands for Math, Engineering, Science, Achievement. Uh, that was on campus, so their program in the engineering department where they'll put on robotics competitions for middle and high schoolers. Um, so yeah, for your non-clinical, that's where I really encourage you to do something that interests you, that is you know possibly unique. You can totally do multiple things. Um, um, and have it be longitudinal. That really should apply to most of your experiences. Um, <clears throat> I think it's helpful to show that you uh, kept working at the same organization, possibly changed your role, advanced or not, just kept doing the same type of thing and learned from it. Um, shadowing, it's pretty simple. Gotta make sure you do. I think it's helpful to try to do it with a couple different types of practitioners. Um, but one thing I'd say is don't worry too much about doing it with the specialty that you think you want to go into. I mean, obviously try to do that if you can, but um, any shadowing is much better than not having any or like struggling to get it because, um, you know, not every physician will be open to it and you'll still learn a lot no matter uh, who you do shadow. Um, and then research is probably one of my favorite things that I did. So like I mentioned, I was a psych major, so I ended up doing psych research. Um, and I'm sure most of you know this, but your major does not matter for medical school. The type of research you do doesn't matter as long as you um, also fulfill all the prereqs and all those different um, extracurricular requirements. So for that, do what interests you. Um, it can also be something unique. Being a psych major is not really that unique but because it was something I was interested in I was able to talk about passionately and like explain what my research was also a major key know what you research know what you found um, I know it can get complicated and you feel like you don't know as much as the grad students do but before your interviews before you write your applications um, <laughs> make sure you have that all figured out um, but yeah, the research I did was in the psych department, it was cognitive psychology, um, looking at uh, bilingualism and how knowing multiple languages or knowing one language would affect your other cognitive processes. Um, that was really cool. Definitely get involved in research while you're at UCR, don't wait. Um, research takes a long time, so, um, you know, from starting a project to either hopefully getting a poster presentation, which there are is a symposium on campus at UCR that's like relatively easy to get into. Um, and there are also other 
regional or other symposia nearby. I know I did one at UCLA. Um, so yeah, you <laughs> want to get involved in that, um, learn as much as you can from it, um, and see if that's something you want to do. Um, either MD, PhD, or um, just being an MD, you can still continue to do a lot of research during medical school and beyond during your career. Um, yeah. And along with that, um, your other, your extracurricular experiences can help you learn what you don't like or what you're good at, what kind of things you'd want to incorporate into your career. Um, and that's something that actually helped me with what was my most dreaded interview question, even though it's kind of the most basic, like why medicine? Just because you really have to have a pretty clear answer for that. So what I went with is, um, as we all know, you can't really say the cliche of, oh, I just like science and helping people, even though that is kind of at the basis for a lot of our answers. Um, so what I did was differentiate out different other um, career paths that also might involve those things, but I wasn't as interested in like research. That will also involve keeping abreast of all the science. In fact, you're contributing to it, um, and it does ultimately help many people. That's how we get all our medical advances. Um, but for me, research just didn't, didn't involve being in the community and like just talking to people, meeting many different people of all walks of life, um, you know, every day as you like you would as a physician. Uh, whereas something like teaching, for example, a science teacher, you would also know many things and be imparting knowledge um, and helping people, but then you're not really at the cutting edge. Like you're really in the community, but you're not as much um, in the ivory tower at the cutting edge of new information. So that's kind of how I parsed it out. Um, for those um, secondary questions and interview questions, I just talked about how I love to amass uh, huge amounts of knowledge. I like to keep updating my knowledge as you have to do as a physician. Um, and then I like sharing it with people and um, you know, informing them, helping them come to a decision about how to proceed with their issue or uh, whatever they're hoping to accomplish. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that was a bit of a departure from my extracurriculars, but it's pretty much what I did at UCR. And then afterwards, I ended up taking a gap year, uh, which I knew I needed to do because I was not ready to apply by the end of my junior year. Um, I hadn't even taken the MCAT yet, so I knew that I, like a year ahead of time that after I graduated, I would need to do something else. So I ended up doing city year, which is an AmeriCorps um, program. AmeriCorps is like a government-sponsored volunteering. There's so many different kinds of it, um, and there's sites all over the country. And basically, it's a whole year-long um, commitment uh, with a stipend that's like very bare <laughs> living allowance. Um, but it allows you to get involved in many different ways. So what city year was is in a typical year, it would be in person and uh, you would have like maybe 10 people on your team coming into a elementary, middle or high school and each would be in a classroom there like all day before school, during lunch, after school, um, connecting with kids um, to tutor them, just have another person there interacting with them. Um, for like an under-resourced school and that was definitely a great way to make connections with people um, learned a lot definitely relevant to medicine so I would recommend that to anyone who like me feels like they didn't have as much leadership or volunteering as they would have liked um, before applying um, but yeah, gap years in general, they're becoming very common. Many people will take one or more, and it's a great time to add to your app whatever um, uh, needs shaping up. Um, for me, like I said, it, it was a full-time position, so I could really only do city year, but you can really customize it. You could definitely like continue on in your research lab part-time while having a clinical or non-clinical job part-time. Um, and things like that. So that's what I did. Um, and during my gap year is when I obviously applied. 
Um, so the way I tackled the application cycle and to back up all of pre-med in general was I just like to have a lot of information, like some people would say too much information. I think researching all this stuff is the way to go. Um, Charlie from HPAG might disagree with me here, but I did look at like SDN a little bit. I don't really like SDN that much. Um, I looked at Reddit, like R pre-med and R MCAT, um, just to see what people were saying. I think it's best to look things up if you have a specific question or just only look at stuff that's relevant to you um, and kind of take what you want and leave the rest. Um, no one's going to do all of pre-med or your application or anything for you, so don't let them dictate how you do it, but um, if you are looking for guidance, look at that, look at the websites of the programs you think you're going to be applying to. Like I was doing that freshman year when I had no idea what was going on. I was like, oh, okay, these are their requirements for the classes I need to take and so on and so forth. Um, so I think it's just good to have a picture. And also HPAC, obviously I met with Charlie probably once a year uh, throughout my time at UCR. I also went to some of the um, seminars that I thought were really helpful. But I think the, ta um, the time that HPAC helped me the most was during the actual application cycle, because at that point um, they can look at your uh, personal statement, your secondaries. Please don't make them look at all of your secondaries. <laughs> I picked some of the ones I was like the most worried about or thought I needed feedback on. Um, and it can do a mock interview with you, which was very, very helpful. But <clears throat> yeah, before you apply, have all your information in front of you. I recommend using MSAR, Medical School Admission Requirements from AAMC. You have to buy that. Um, I think it's free or discounted if you meet certain income guidelines. So look at that before buying it if you think um, you might qualify. Uh, but that will literally just have every school, um, little like statements that they write about themselves, but it'll have their, um, their percentile breakdowns for the GPA and MCAT scores. Um, so the general rule of thumb is, with that is you want probably the bulk of your schools to be, your scores to be in the 25th to 75th percentile range. Um, obviously, by definition, people below the 25th and above the 75th uh, for both of those things got in. Um, but yeah, that's just a rule of thumb. And then obviously things like location, schools, different missions, like are they heavy on research or um, service or anything like that. Um, and from there, you just make your school list. And another thing, like I think one of the most pro tips for applications is to pre-write your secondaries um, just so you're not stressed when they're all coming out <clears throat> during the summer. Yeah, and another thing, know the order of operations as basic as it may seem like know how the cycle is going to look ahead of time when do things normally happen um so that you're not caught off guard like read that like 100 page document on the AAMC that um has all the rules for how to fill out your application like i think it's good to have borderline too much information than to be caught off guard um yeah, but for secondaries, what I did was uh, this is a time where I think SDN is kind of helpful. And I think there's also other sites that will post the previous year's um, secondary prompts from schools. And those tend to not change very much year to year. Um, so I just took all of those, copy and pasted them into a massive Word document with the character limits. Um, and then instead of just grouping it by school, I grouped it by type of prompt because there's only so many of them. So they'll have like, what is your best leadership experience? Like, what is the time you like made a mistake or something? Um, and multiple schools will ask really similar ones. So I grouped it by that. And then um, you can have like one draft for that topic and then um, adapt it to the different schools and different character limits. Um, there's also quite a few that are school specific, like write a page about why you want to go to this specific school. and. It's just so good to do that ahead of time because it takes a lot of research um, to be able to say that much about a school you've probably never visited or know that much about until you scour their website. So yeah, I would suggest doing that very, very, very ahead of time and giving yourself plenty of time to write your personal statements, have people look at it, 
age pack. I had a couple of my like just pre-health friends look at it, which was cool. Um, someone from the ARC looked at it from like the writing center or something. And pro tip, um, age pack can keep helping you after you graduate while you're applying or whatever. Um, the ARC, I think, will only help you while you're still at UCR. So if you want them to look at anything, I would do that before you graduate. I think that's true. Um, yeah, application cycle. So pre-writing, um, looking over, and then once it's sent in, all you can really do is wait, um, practice your interview skills, um, practice it by yourself, um, with friends or family members if you can, um, and with uh, someone that knows a little bit more like uh, Charlie or someone else from HPAC. Um, that was my app cycle. It was all online, which was interesting. Um, and now, after all that, I ended up at uh, St. Louis University School of Medicine or SLU. Um, right now I'm almost done with the first semester of our preclinical pre curriculum. Um, it's been a wild ride. Um, what we've done so far is we had a like two week biochem course that was mostly review. So if anyone's taken biochem 100, it was like all of that condensed down even further. Um, so a lot of things you're learning do come back. I promise you that. Um, thankfully this time we didn't have to like write out all of glycolysis by hand though. So uh, don't worry about those uh, type of details in med school. Um, but after that, we had like a short statistics course, and now for the entire rest of the semester, we've been doing something called normal structure and function. That's anatomy, so like doing dissections, um, cadavers, and then physiology, like the normal functioning of all the different body systems, uh, neuro, embryo, and histology, which is like looking at s slides of cells, like sections of cells. Um, <clears throat> So that's been cool, <laughs> definitely a lot of information. Um, something I'd also say as a pro tip, uh, especially at UCR, is to take some neuro classes if you can. Um, I took quite a few as a psych major. I just chose to have some of my upper div um, electives be neuro, and I didn't realize how helpful it would be, but um, more so than bio or chem, which give much more of a foundation for med school which then gets a lot more complicated once you actually start i feel like neuro actually gives a very like deep thorough picture of some of these um pathways and just like neurotransmitter processes neural path pathways um that come up over and over and over again um and kind of made some of our neuro stuff be reviewed for me which i was surprised about or um, just very similar types of reasoning to stuff I've done at UCR. So uh, something like CBNS 106, maybe one or two more classes if you feel up to it, um, I feel like could be really helpful. Um, yeah, that's that's been my semester so far. Um, there's also tons of opportunities to get involved in student groups, uh, like uh, clubs, research, volunteering um, a lot of schools will have like student run clinics um, we also had a class on in clinical interviewing so we've already gone to meet with like standardized patients and um, do a very basic kind of intake interview with them yeah it's been really fun actually um, I think that's all I have for you um, hopefully I wasn't rambling too much but um, if there's anything I didn't get to or if you have more questions, I will leave my contact information. Um, I have no idea how many people are going to see this or reach out, um, but I think I will prioritize people who either are psych majors and have questions about that with pre-med or who have an interview or are thinking of coming to SLU. Uh, but if you don't meet those criteria and you still want to reach out, definitely do. Um, and I'll try my best to respond. It just depends on how many people do reach out. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs>